Okay. So we'll go ahead and get started. And I will um, share with you that one, I have been using uh, Nearpod almost since its birth. <laughs> so, and it was, it's made so many great changes um, over the years. And I have used it in every grade level. I mean, I've had great lessons in kindergarten and I've had great lessons in high school and in between. So I find that it's something that teachers in all grade levels can easily use. So let me tell you what we're going to do. And some of you missed our earlier conversation. I will tell you, I'm from the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, area. So if you think I have an accent, I do uh, <laughs> and all. But the first part, you're going to be my students. I'm going to be the teacher and you're gonna be my students in a Nearpod presentation. The reason I do that is I want you to see what the students will see when you're doing a lesson, what's on their screen as opposed to on the teacher screen. Then in the second half, we will be in your Nearpod library and I will be showing you how to create, how to find lessons in the Nearpod library, how to edit, uh, so that you could have a lesson ready to use uh, tomorrow. I'm delighted that we have a two hour window because we can really do a great job. When I have to do a one hour, I will tell you, I am a mile a minute. <laughs> but I'm gonna sh start sharing my screen here. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to my Nearpod account and I want you just to go to nearpod.com as if you were telling your students to do that. And you're just gonna wait till I give you the code. Now your, your students do not have to have a um, Nearpod account. It's only the teachers that do uh, the, um, have a Nearpod account. And so regardless of what their devices are or anything, they will, uh, all they'll need is to be able to log on to nearpod.com. Or if you do have an LMS, a lot of times you can put the links there. Now, this is my library. If you're brand new to Nearpod, yours is probably kind of blank, but I've been using it a long time and you see, I. Up here at the top, I have folders. And some of my folders have like science. I have 21 lessons in there. And so it helps me to be better organized and all. And you may wanna make folders from the very beginning so that you can either do it by subject matter or by period one, period two, period three. And uh, it's, I'm gonna show you how to make folders and such as well. So I'm going into one of my folders and I'm finding the lesson that we're going to do today. Now, for me, the teacher, I have two choices. I can do live participation, which is what we will do. And that means I am driving the presentation. You, the students cannot get ahead of me or anything like that. Uh, student pace, which is very popular now during any type of virtual training, is um, where the students get the same lesson. They get a, a code and they do it on their time and all. And that has become very important uh, for those that have students um, virtually and all. Because we know that some of our students may be helping siblings, um, they may have a part-time job, whatever. So you have live participation and student paste and all. And up here, I have three dots. One of the things, don't ever be afraid to click on anything. You're not gonna break Nearpod, but those three dots give me some real quick options. I can get to reports. The reports are very extensive. I can export a lesson as a PDF. I could get rid of it. I could uh, add it to the school library or, or a folder. I could duplicate it. Or if I find a great lesson that maybe I wanna share with all the teachers or uh, just in my building or something, 
I can share the lesson. But I'm going to click on live participation. And I'm going to launch with a new code. This is a five, it's five letters. It's not case sensitive. This is what you either share via link or just give it, let the students know that they need to type in up at the top. There's a place for student code on their homepage. There's a banner that says join. So they're going to type in N C A W K. Now, for me, the teacher, when even when I close out this screen, that code is always going to be in the top left hand corner. So if I have someone come in late, uh, I can give them the code very quickly and they catch up with exactly where I am in the lesson. As I say, I can give it to the students just as I'm giving it to you now. I could email it to them. I could uh, link it um, into their, uh, as a, a link, I could put it in Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams. So there's lots of ways that the kids can get this code. So it's N-C-A-W-K. Now, every time I launch a new presentation, I get a new code. For you that are in maybe middle school and high school, if you have uh, students period one, two, three, so forth, you wanna launch it with a new code every time because in reports, you want your students in period one to be all grouped together, the ones in period two to be all grouped together, okay? And if you practice with your own family the night before, you just want to make sure you know what you're doing. Um, don't take that code, write it down, type it up, laminate it so you can show your kids. Because every time you launch new, you will get a new code. So I click on that. And now your screen should look like my screen. And down here at the bottom, I will see a, um, how many students in my class have logged on. At this point, I don't see their names, but if you know if you have 15 students and they're in this lesson, they should be logged on. Now, I'm not seeing all that number yet. So if any of you are having problems, uh, let me know right now. And, I'll give you the code again or direct you to the spot because I really want all of you to participate uh, as students. I think it's very important um, so that when you're working with your own students, you have a better idea of, of what they're experiencing. So I just see that we have about six on and maybe it's part of it. Maybe there's more on and uh, they just haven't registered with me yet. So when I start moving on, I have these arrows on the front and back of my, on the left and right hand side. And that's how I nav navigate through my lesson. Now, you can try to get ahead of me, but you, you cannot move this lesson along because I am the teacher and this is live participation, okay? So I'm gonna go on to the next screen. And uh, this is who I am. I've actually retired now, which is wonderful, but I do still a lot of consulting. And I am a, a level three certified trainer uh, for Nearpod. And if you have questions afterwards, there's my email, Joan Gore at yahoo.com and all. Now, uh, you might see on my screen right now, uh, this is just, of course, a slide, but you see I have an immersive, an icon up in the top right hand. If I have immersive reader turned on, on certain of the slides, this will show up. And if you have kids that need to have, like in a quiz, have the question read to them and their choices, they can click on that and that will read it to them. 
So when we go to in after we finish the presentation into your settings, I will show you how you toggle that on. Now the next screen is a Google form and I'm asking you to fill in your name and your email. And the reason I'm doing this is because afterwards I will send you additional resources, but you can put a Google form inside of a uh, Nearpod lesson. So I will be able just to flip over to my Google Forms and copy your email and send you those additional resources. So um, when we get into editing, you'll see how easy it is to uh, take things and uh, add content or add activities. So it's just a very brief form, your name and your email. Now the next slide, this is, um, so this is for the students. Up in your top right hand corner, you see an icon where it's, there's like a paper and pencil. And you click on that and you can have, take notes during this presentation. And you can, ch you choose, do you want them sent to you e by email? Do you want to save to Google Drive or to OneDrive? Now, you, the teacher, will not see your student notes. And so this icon is just on the student's screen. It is not on my teacher screen. So I need to remember when I'm working with students to be sure to tell them to turn on notes. Now, obviously, if you have little ones, uh, they're probably not going to take notes. But what will happen is after this, you will get this whole presentation and any notes that you have taken. So it's a very good uh, way for, for your students to take their own information. Now, throughout this presentation, you may see <clears throat> a slide. It has this downward arrow, and that just means that Nearpod has added a reinforcement slide. And it shows you again, just more about notes. How did I get there? That as a student, I have that icon and I choose how I want it sent to me. And we may not look at everything in this because I really like to spend time where you are in your own account. I think that is important for you. So here's what I'm doing. I'm, as, I'm taking a poll and I'm asking you which of the following best describes your familiarity with Nearpod. And so you choose where you would put yourself. So all of you should be taking the poll. What's happening on my end is that I am seeing in real time exactly what, where your level is. Is it where I've been told that we are, uh, most of us are new to Nearpod. And so it is building a pie chart for me. And the majority of you are saying, I've heard of Nearpod. And I said, great. And um, I use near, you know, you might have someone that has used it before and it looks like you do. And that person can be a great resource for the rest of you and all. Now, I, when I do um, polls with my with students, I, I can share out the results of the polls to all of you and you see my pie chart. And kids love seeing the results of polls. And so uh, it's, it, and they wanna see them. So I would just, uh, anytime I would share those with my students. Now, here's what I was seeing on my screen. I was seeing all the name, your names, and I was seeing in real time what you were selecting. And over here, it was automatically building this um, pie chart for me. So some of you said, well, I've heard of Nearpod, but I'm not sure I know what Nearpod is. It is a presentation uh, to, uh, package, but what makes it unique and what makes it so versatile is 
that you can download lessons that are already made and customize them to fit your class. You can create, it's very interactive. You can have interactive lessons in minutes. Uh, anything that can be graded will be graded. And most of all, you get that 100% student participation. Kids love Nearpod. Now, this is a video. And okay. yes, do I have a question? And please, if you do have a question, just unmute, unmute yourself and pop in because it certainly doesn't bother me. But anytime I have a video, this pops up on my screen and it says, um, where would you like to, uh, for the video to be played? On all devices or on this device only? Now, a lot of times I do it on my device only, especially if I'm face to face, because otherwise if I, I'm face to face and unless they hear it, have earbuds on, this can be get very distracting. But if I do say all devices, and a lot of teachers are doing that because they have virtual students, uh, they are uh, letting it play on the student devices. Today, I'm just going to say this device only, which means we'll all start at the same time. Okay. So this is a sh um, all through this presentation, Nearpod has put together some very short uh, videos. And that means you can always come back to these and use them as review. So I'm gonna click on- Introducing that. Nearpod. With Nearpod, you can make every lesson interactive. Launch lessons your students can't wait to join with collaborative engaging activities like virtual reality, simulations, and gamified quizzes. As the teacher, you'll always know where your students are with Nearpod's formative assessments, including polls, open-ended questions, draw -its, and more. Get started with what you already have. Upload any of your favorite resources, PowerPoints, Google Slides, and videos, including directly from YouTube. Then add in media and formative assessment in a few clicks. And now you can add questions directly into videos to make them interactive. Get started even faster with our library of pre-made lessons and videos, built in partnership with some of your favorite brands. You can use them as is, or customized to meet the unique needs of your students. Once you're ready to launch your lesson, choose from three teaching modes. In live participation mode, you control the pace and students participate on their devices, either in person or remotely with web conferencing. <coughs> In student-paced mode, students move through and participate on their own, whether they're working from home or in class working in centers, stations, or groups. With front-of-class mode, you can use Nearpod without student devices and facilitate collaborative discussions. Imagine what you can do with Nearpod. Your students will love lessons that combine engaging media with collaborative ways for them to show off how much they've learned. You'll love unlocking student understanding in real time and having reports to inform the next day's instruction. You'll wonder how you taught without it. Okay, so this is a lesson that we're going through that I, uh, it's several years old. It started out as a PowerPoint. It wasn't interactive, but I brought it into Nearpod and I made it very interactive. So this is on Predator and Prey. Now you have on your screen, it says, draw a picture of what you think a predator would look like. So you have some drawing tools there on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. And really, I don't spend any time when I'm with students uh, explaining each of the tools. They kind of grab them and run. Probably the only thing I do tell them is that there are more colors than black. I absolutely do not tell them about the eraser because they'll want to erase and start over. And sometimes I, I can put a timer on this activity and mainly because uh, they, they usually want to take more time than I've allotted. And I um, have to you know give them a warning, three minutes, three seconds or something like that. 
But what's happening on my end, I'm watching you draw in real time. Now I have to say, some of you are better artists than others, but one of the things I like to do with a, now to me, this is, is a pre-assessment. I'm trying, I'm finding out, do they really understand what a predator is? And so I can see in real time uh, what my students are doing. One of the other things I love doing, and I tell you, I do get 100% participation. We all have those students that don't ever raise their hand or they never ask a question are there at all, but maybe they're a good artist and maybe their drawing is just really spot on. I can share these drawings to you. Uh, Somebody starting over, see, I can tell you got the hold of the eraser. Um, and I can um, share their drawing with the whole class. Well, that does a lot for their self-esteem and it's really, you know, and we can discuss why it is a predator. Also, if I do it with elementary classes, if I do share out one students, they all want theirs to be shared. But I might take this drawing right here and I might say, you know, Hannah is just one of those students that never really, uh, participates, but Hannah, would you go ahead and submit? So while I'm waiting for people to submit, I, there, uh, there's a bar at the bottom and it's yellow. When it turns green, I know that they have submitted. So if all of you'll go ahead and submit. Now in the reports, what you'll see by each student's name will be their drawing. So here's Hannah who is very shy, but look, I'm gonna share her drawing with all of you and you can see what an outstanding job um, she did. And as I said, we could just talk about it. We could have Hannah explain why this is a predator and all. So the drawing activity is very creative and it's, uh, I'm gonna show you a different way to use draw it. It doesn't have to be just a drawing, but this is what I was seeing. I was seeing the pictures as they were being drawn. And then when you submitted, this turned green. So draw it is an activity that was added to this slideshow. So here's predators with images. We talk about what is a predator and so forth. Now, this is a different way to use the draw it tool. This was just a slide with these, sen with these sentences that were typed. And I converted it to a draw it activity. Now you have your drawing tools and I'm asking you to circle the uh, predator in each sentence. So I'm doing a formative assessment. I'm finding out, okay, we've talked about a predator, We've looked at images. Do they really understand what a predator is? I can very quickly look at these and find out how my, do my students understand this. And so if they do, that's great. We go on. If I'm seeing, oh my, they're not really getting this, then what do I need to do? I stop and I reteach. So this was just a plain slide that got converted to a draw it slide. And I'll show you how to do that. And this could be a map. It could be a map where you um, uh, color in the 13 colonies, color in the state you were born in, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, there's just so many different ways to use a draw it activity. Okay, so go ahead and submit. Oh, you all have. And this, again, this is what I was seeing. And so I could see, yes, everybody got it. Um, and also we're ready to continue on. 
This is a 3D image. Woo! And um, this is in, another way to add content. So we're talking about predators and then we can look at a shark and kids can move the, around and really see their teeth and all of that. And so, um, but it's not just something like a shark. There's the auditory system, there's the skeletal system and where it's 3D and where the students can turn it and move it and see it from all uh, angles. That looks pretty. Hey, John, is that in the, that 3D piece in the library? It is a way, it's in when we add content, but it, it is built in, there's a library of 3D images, but it's not quote in the library. Uh, you'll see where it is and all, okay? But ask questions like that. Um, if I, you know, so that's, that's 3D. And this is a quiz. It only has two questions. You could have 10 questions. You could have 25 questions. And so please just go ahead and take the quiz. Again, in real time, I'm going to see how my class is doing. So I can do something like this and you know, it's building again, a pie chart for me. And if my pie chart is all green or mostly green, that's good. If it's red, then again, I stop and I reteach. Now, all of this will be graded for you and will show up in the reports. And you'll see in the reports, a summary. You'll see uh, by each, you can see by each question how, how that question, the percentage of people that got it right, uh, you can see individually. So you are my talented and gifted, everybody got it. Again, this is what I was seeing. Here was your names and I saw that immediately uh, that you had, you understood pretty well what a uh, predator was. Now, this is a collaborate board. This is like asking the students to write something on a sticky note and put it on the bulletin boards. Now, here's, I get this pop-up and this side, it says, would you like to approve the student comments before they are posted? Well, if I have high school and middle school students, yes, maybe I need to approve those. If I have younger students, probably not. Now, I'm not going to, I don't feel the need to approve yours, your adults and all. So my collaborate board says, search for a picture of a prey, add it to the collaborate board and describe your animal. Down here at the bottom, you have a text box. And then right to here in the text box is a little blue square. It looks kind of like a landscape icon. Uh, when you click on that, that's going to take you to Google Images. So I might type in here, a rabbit is a prey because, now I'm just going to type in Swedish, and then I'm going to go here to the uh, search, and I'm going to come up here. I'm gone to Google Images, and I type in rabbit and I hit the magnifying glass and I have an image of rabbits. I save it and now I post it. So go ahead and post your response. So I've, I've talked about why this is a prey. Uh, I have an image and they do come in um, by uh, whoever puts theirs up there first. Again, I could have a timer on this activity and all. I like it. Um, it's, it's another way that I get all that 100% participation. And uh, I can have quite a bit, my students could uh, have quite a bit of information and all. Now, anytime that I'm working uh, with students on say, and there's quizzes or something I'm sharing out, down, down in the bottom right hand corner of my screen, I can hide student names. 
And so when I click on hide student names, you see now everybody's posting, but you don't see who has posted what and all. So that's, uh, you know, sometimes that's important to be able to do that. You see, um, say you didn't approve them and somebody put something inappropriate. You have a trash can on each of these and you can delete those uh, inappropriate ones. Um, again, great point for discussion. You know, there may be one that is, that's been really well thought out. This little heart means that if you wanted to, you could let the students vote on which one they thought was the best and all. So this is a collaborate board. You don't have John, to have an image, you could just have text. Um, Joan, can I ask a question on yes, that? Please. Yes. Um, so I had two images that I tried to put in and both of them were rejected. So can you tell me why they're coming up as possibilities if they're not in the safe search? Well, is uh, we're, and you hit this and you went to Google Images, right? Yep. Can you tell me what you typed in? Calf, C-A-L-F. Oh, like a calf, <laughs> a baby cow. Yeah, and I chose, uh, so second on the left, the uh, black, white face. Oh, Angus. okay. That one. All right. So then when I typed it in and tried to post it, it told me it was rejected. Okay. Oh, not, okay. Not found caused by error. This image cannot be used due to copyright. Okay. So that one had copyright issues. That's the first time I've ever seen that. But uh, Google Images, you know, you have copyright images and you have non-copyright images. So uh, I don't know if that's what the other one was or not. Yes, and, it was exactly the same. But I guess I'm asking why they're pulling in if, because there were well, only- remember, That's, you know, they're using Google Images. That's not necessarily, um, I'm just, you know, in Google Images, you can have those that fall under copyright. And so, as I said, that's the first time I have actually seen that. And so I, to me, it must be um, uh, Google say you can look at it, but you can't share it. That's the only thing I know. So, uh, so did you find something you could use? <laughs> but a cat, that's kind of, you, but let me see, I'm going to do that again. Let me just do this. I, you know, I'm always curious. And so I don't want the calf of somebody's leg. So I'm just going to, I found a different one and post and let's see. And that time it was fine. So I guess you just have to find another picture of a calf. Um, but I'm, you know, as I said, that's coming down from Google and all. Um, this is what I was seeing a quite, you know, I was seeing people's names and then I hid the student names so that you didn't see who posted what and all. So I like collaborate board with my students a lot. Um, this is just going on with the lesson. Now, this is an open-ended question. Can an animal be both a predator and, and a prey? Explain your answer. Open-ended questions will not be graded for you because there's no right or wrong answer. And so, um, but you will see each student's response and all. So go, I don't want a dissertation. Some of you just type something in there. But what I'm seeing is, oh, you were, oh, somebody knows Swedish just, just like I do. Um, I can see when the students have a, um, answered, I see my participation rate, you know, is it 100% or is it 75% and such. I, I again, open-ended questions I use a lot with students because I'm, I want them to be involved. I want them to 
express their opinions and such. And so I'm just gonna go on even if I only have 55% participation, that's okay. So I was seeing this and you know, Mary Poppins really nailed this. She explained it well, and I could share that out with all of the students and we could talk about it. You may not have heard of Microsoft Sway. I call it PowerPoint on steroids. Uh, this is another way to add content. I did not make this Microsoft Sway. In fact, I've never made one, but I like to add them as content because the, all of the ones that are in a Nearpod for you to choose from, the images are just unbelievable. And you get so much information. So when I'm working with students, I have to tell myself, give them enough time to read this. Give them, an, if they're taking notes, to take notes uh, and all. And all I'm doing is gliding down this Microsoft Sway. And this is a deck of cards and each one of those has an image and some information. And so the students can just click through here. And I'll show you where these are for you to use. So this is Microsoft Sway. Nearpod has worked hard to develop partnerships with uh, many um, entities and such, and that's just one of them. Uh, this is matching, and teachers really love this. You create your own matching words. And so you can go ahead and start uh, matching these up. Uh, you can match a word with a definition you could have a math problem and the answer. You could have an image to an image. Uh, you could have a, like if you have younger students, beginning sounds and then a picture of that beginning sound and all. And so it doesn't take you long to create them at all. And you're gonna see that in a little bit. For me in real time, I'm seeing how many times does it take my students to get these matched up? And, you know, eight out of eight, that's pretty good. I don't think you could have done better. Uh, if I have somebody that's just clicking around and really not trying, I'm going to see it took them eight out of 24 times. Um, either they were extremely unlucky or they just weren't paying attention. And so I do see this. Um, I could view the pairs with my students so we could talk about them and all. But this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing how many matches and how many tries it took you. So Oprah uh, was just kind of probably clicking around. This is VR, virtual reality. And again, this is a way to add more content. I, I mean, students are fascinated. Sometimes when I have a virtual reality, I might have a slide in front of this with my uh, question that I want them to think about as they, as they use this. And so I see I, my question could be, how would you describe coral in the coral reefs? Or what are the characteristics? Or how are they different? Can you find the predator in this uh, image. And so as I twirl it around here, you, ooh, there's a mighty big predator. And I'm just using my keypad. I don't even have a mouse uh, on my computer, on my laptop. So it could be something like this. It could be, we're studying Egypt. I can take them to the pyramids and let them view them in, in 360. I could show them Shakespeare's theater in London. So again, this is a partnership with 360 cities. And also occasionally, yes, you may get a image that has some tourists in it, but you know, that doesn't bother me at all. And 360 cities does vet their images. 
So, you know, I'm always, oh, I wonder if they really do, if they just say that. So I went out in my backyard and I did a 360 of my backyard and I sent it to 360 cities. And a couple of weeks, I got a very polite email that said, sorry, this is not well, not good enough. They didn't actually say it in those words, but, and really who would want to see a 360 of my backyard? So they do look at them and all. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things we could have discussion on, but we're gonna move on. And that's a uh, collaborate board without any images with just the uh, students responding. Uh, again, they, you know, these downward arrows mean if you're looking at this presentation later that there's some additional slides there. Uh, logging on to Nearpod for you, the teacher, is very easy. And, uh, and this, again, just telling you exactly step by step. Uh, anytime you click on this symbol, this is... Uh, takes you to your homepage, to your library. Uh, a plus sign, wherever it might be, means you can create a new lesson, you can create a new slide. Quick launch is, I really didn't have a Nearpod, uh, but we got into this discussion and I would like to throw out a open-ended question, maybe as an exit ticket. And so I can just click on that and I can just do an open-ended question immediately or a draw it or a collaborate board. We will look at your profile because there are some settings there that you need to decide, do I want them toggled on or off? And that's where immersive reader student notes uh, and a lot are where they are. And this again, just takes you, gives you reinforcement. And I will tell you the Nearpod library is going to become your best new friend. There are over 8,500 lessons already made that you can use. And in August, they introduced interactive videos and there's now over a hundred of those. Uh, or you can bring in a video from say YouTube and add your own questions. If you ever have used Edpuzzle in the past, it'll remind you of Edpuzzle. And I'm going to show you how to search. You know, you don't have time to look at 8,500 lessons. So when we get through with the presentation, we'll go into the Nearpod library. We'll talk about all the state standards are in there. So, you know, how to find a lesson on a certain state standard. Or if you just want to find the videos that are already available. Uh, this is how the use filters, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're not going to take the time, but you can always go back and look at that. I'm also going to show you how to add Nearpod lessons to your library. And notice this again, it's a very uh, short video that you can uh, come back and watch. All you have to do is Click on this play button down here. And I can create my own collection of ready-made lessons from the Nearpod lesson library. As you can see here, I'm in my library in the Nearpod menu. To get to the Nearpod lesson library, I click this button on the left sidebar. This takes me into the Nearpod lesson library where I can search for a specific lesson. I'll start with fractions. These search results return a variety of lessons for a variety of grade levels that have to do with fractions. If I'd like to narrow that search, I can do that on the sidebar like this. So you can see I've selected fifth grade math. This returns lessons that are specific to fifth grade math. I can preview any of these lessons by hovering over the thumbnail and clicking it. Here, I can preview the lesson to see if it's what I want. And if it is, I click add to my library then changes to show in my library. If I click here, I can launch the lesson. This screen allows me to launch it live or student paste, edit it or share it. I can also return back to my library by clicking the blue house in the corner. And I am now able to launch the lesson by hovering over it, clicking live lesson, student paste. I can edit it here or preview it. Okay, so it's very easy to find lessons already made and put them into your library. 
and all. Uh, probably the question we get most is, where do I get that student code? It looked so easy when we did the training. So when you're launching a lesson, whether it be student pace or live participation, that is when the code will pop up. And so again, if you think, oh, I know she showed us this video. It's easy to launch a Nearpod lesson from your Nearpod library. Once you're logged into your Nearpod library, you can see here, this is the home base. You hover over any lesson and you can choose a live lesson or a student paste. Any lesson can be launched either way. A live lesson is one where the teacher is driving the slides and changing them and it changes on all the student devices. And a student paced lesson is one where the students can go at their own pace and don't need the teacher to drive to change slides. I'll now show you how to launch a live lesson. I click live lesson. A code generates that you can share with students via email, link, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, and more. A student need only go to nearpod.com and enter the code as shown here. The code is not case sensitive. Once they have done this, they'll be prompted to enter their name and then they click join session. The teacher can then control how the slides change on the student screen. Okay, so that's, and after you've done one or two, it's just a second nature. You don't even think about it. And a student paste is the same thing. The students get a code. Um, that code is by default good for 29 days um, and all. And so it'll just look like this. There is a tab here that requires student submissions. Well, I'd always make sure that was showing on because if I put in draw it activities, a quiz, matching, whatever, I want to make sure my students do that before they go on to the next slide. And if that's on, they, it forces them to do the activity. Um, so this st uh, student view and teacher view can be different. Remember right now you've been in student view. Nearpod reports, and uh, I'll show you one of mine as well is, uh, as I said, if it's, can be graded, it'll be graded, but even like the drawings and open-ended um, responses will be there for you to see. And there's about three different ways to get to your reports. Uh, they make it very, very easy. And immediately after I end this session, my uh, your results will be there for me to see. As I said, we're not stopping to look at everything. Um, just by my choice and all. But this is fill in the blank. And so what you're doing, you've got a drag and drop, you're finding the words, you're dragging them over to the right space. So again, it, this will be graded for you. And so as you drag them over and all, and you create your own fill in the blanks. And that, again, that will be something you'll see here in just a minute. Okay, so you have, that's an activity. So to near pods that are already created, you can add content such as a, a website, um, or you can add activities such as a drawing. Uh, this is time to climb. It's a gamified version of a quiz. Um, Kids of all ages, you know, they like games. Now, some of your older students may say, oh, this is too young for me. Well, okay. Um, you can, uh, all I have to do is click this continue button and you pick your name there and I'll see you pop up with your name on your name and all. And so we're not, I, we're going to do one for just a, two or three questions so that you get a feel for it. But you can take any quiz in Nearpod and turn it into a time to climb. Uh, there's some time to climbs that are already done. The one we're going to do, I did not create. I found it in the Nearpod library and then we, um, and I just put it in this lesson. And so once I have all my students in, 
I just click start and there's a timer. leaderboard and I can tell you right now Tina is leading but she's not that far ahead and it's based on getting it correct and getting it the fastest and all so another good way to review just kind of changing it up getting your kids involved and more engaged and uh, you know so th this is on there there and there and that's uh, something adults still struggle with sometimes. Uh, Tina's still in the lead. So this just has seven questions. So we would go through and then at the end, it would uh, give me the leaderboard and such. But we're gonna stop it and go on. Uh, so it says, push all the buttons. You're not gonna break it, okay? Now, uh, as I said, so we're going to be in your library because I want you to be able to um, understand how to add, edit, create, and such. But you're, you'll look at a screen that says add content. That means I can add a uh, video. I might have a great video that's not in my lesson I want to add. I can add a field trip. I can, if you're a math science teacher, FET simulations are from the University of Colorado at Boulder, and they're broken into uh, high school, middle school, and elementary. It's pretty hard right now to do um, hands-on science, so maybe you're doing a simulation, and there's a lot of great FET simulations. Here's the Microsoft Sway. This is uh, BBC, British Broadcasting, some great videos. If you're a high school math teacher, so this is Desmos, another partnership. Um, this is, uh, if you want to add a URL, uh, and you can do it right inside of Nearpods, and the, all the kids have to do is click on the link. They don't have to get outside and try to type in those URLs. So we're going to look at those. Um, very active on, um, there's a, a Facebook group, Nearpod Educators, um, that's very active. That's where teachers put ideas. If they have a question, if something's not working, they may throw it out there uh, and all. Now, Nearpod likes to collect feedback, and I don't see this feedback. And so this is just a short survey. It's um, all and it just goes directly to Nearpod. So go ahead and if you want to just go ahead and fill it in. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, when you have finished the survey, you can go ahead and exit and be in just your account in your library because that's where I will be going and all. And so um, but the feedback is important to Nearpod because sometimes teachers will put something in there and they'll say, oh, we need to look at that. We need to figure out why it didn't work or what's going on or that's a great suggestion. And they're very good about listening uh, to teachers and all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, end my session. I could get to reports. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure and all. So I am now back in my library and you can be, have a second tab open and be in your library or if you just wanna watch me, that's fine. Whichever you're comfortable with. Now, this is, remember, my library, not the Nearpod library. Over here, I'm gonna glide down to Nearpod library. Now, when I'm in the Nearpod library, that's where those 8,500 lessons are. And here's how you're going to do use the filters. Uh, you're in Illinois. 
I slide down to, and it, that's right, Bill, Illinois. <laughs> okay. So you, you find your state and you maybe you're a science teacher and you teach fifth grade and I just scroll on down. I look for my strands. Here's fifth grade science. Okay, so, um, represent data and okay, I'm gonna pick this one. And here are three lessons that fit that uh, standard that I might could use if I ne needed some more something about um, to meet that standard. That's one way. And I can clear those filters by just clicking on this X, but that's not the only way to search. I could say I am a social studies eighth grade. And so now I've said social studies eighth grade. Now, some of these, this says world holidays and traditions. There's actually 20 lessons in there. Uh, so some may have a bunch but you come down here and you see all of these lessons. Some are going to be by teachers. And again, uh, those lessons have been uh, vetted. Uh, like I know Jody Lunn, I know without doubt hers are going to be a great lesson. Here's some done by Microsoft Sway. Uh, so there's a, a lot of different lessons in here that I might use. So I was searching by my subject and my grade level. So I could do any of my subjects and then I could do grade level. Or I could come right here and I could put in, um, let's put in World War II. That's, I have a high school class. And I get these lessons. Well, I still have quite a few, but so maybe I need to say eighth grade. So I just make my search a little bit um, fewer to uh, look at. And so here's the effects of World War, World War II. And I have to preview the lesson, which I should. And I see that this is, it has 28 slides. That's the nice size. Uh, I can preview it and I would go through and I would preview it. That's Jody Lyon. As I said, she does a great job and all. And so I like it. And also I know I can edit any part of this. So I say, add to my library. So it's taking this lesson that Jody has already done and it is now in my library and I can click on show in my library or I can click up here on the Nearpod icon. Now, when it's in my library, which is where I'm back to, I can edit. The original one will remain in the Nearpod library, okay? So here's edit. I click on edit and it says, you're about to edit. Do you wanna edit the lesson or you wanna duplicate the lesson? Took me a long time to figure out why I would want to duplicate it. But one time I was just editing one and I was about halfway done. And I thought, you know, that original lesson was a lot better than what I've done. So if I duplicate it, that means I have the original version and uh, the one I'm working on. And that's just a hint to the wise. So when I bring it in and I click on edit, I see all the slides. Well, you know, I'm sorry, my kids really are not going to be interested in finding out who about Jody Lund. Lund. So I just click on delete slide, okay? I might not be doing a think, pair, and share. I can delete the slide, fine. So I can go through here 
and any of these slides that I might want to uh, delete, it's very easy for me to do so. Now, I will say that in um, some of these lessons that have been in here a couple of years, you probably won't find matching pairs and you will not probably not find a video because that those options were not available. But right up here, I have add a slide. I could click here or I could click here. It doesn't make any difference. And this is where I add content and activities. And what you're gonna see me doing, it's the same steps over and over. So this is a lesson and I have a, a website that I really want my kids to go to in this lesson. I click on web content and I type in the URL and I'm just putting ESPN.com just cause it's short and all. I could have put NASA.gov. That's a nice short one, but you know, so often our URLs would fill up this whole screen. Now, I always test my link. I want to make sure that it goes to the website that I'm planning on it going to. I do not want any surprises. Now I can click that that's it went to NASA. Great. That's that's uh, what I needed it to do. So I'm going to click on this, close it out. I've tested the link and I'm going to save it. Now that let that slide that I just anytime you add slides, they always land at the bottom. And so I just move it to wherever I would like for that to come up. Sometimes when I'm editing and I know I'm going to add several different things, I just let them fall to the bottom and then I move them when they're when I'm ready. This is 3D. As I said, here's the shark. But look, I've got uh, this. I've got the full body. I've got uh, a carbon nanotube. I've got an animal cell. I mean, look at that image. It's 3D. It's very detailed. The kids can really zoom in and zoom out on it. And so this fits in great with my lesson and I want to include it. And so I just say done. And again, it's added automatically. It's down there at the bottom. Uh, I could just create a new slide. Uh, these are the FET simulations I was talking about. And you can see we have at math, elementary, middle school, high school, same thing for science. And so maybe I'm a elementary science teacher and I need a simulation on static electricity. So I look at this, I preview it and I like it, I say done. So you see that I am just doing the same steps. I'm adding a new slide. I'm on content right now. Here are my VR field trips. Uh, and I can do a search and I can do pyramids. And I hit the magnifying glass and I get these images of the pyramids. And I could choose one of those to add to uh, my uh, presentation. Okay, very easy. Uh, that's the field trips. Here's the graphing calculator. calculator. Here's uh, BBC videos and they're in different categories. Here's um, history. So I might find something great in here from the BBC video uh, library that I want to add. Uh, Sway, here's the Microsoft Sways. Again, they have them in nice categories. Here is, I could have famous landmarks, historical events, and I would just click on that and I could come down here to Franklin Roosevelt 
and I could add that sway. Uh, I would preview it and such. And now it would be in my uh, library. So I really do not, I, in my presentation, I really do not have to start from scratch and all. Uh, a slideshow is you bring in maybe a PowerPoint or Google Slides, and it's not a new slideshow. These slides come in one on top of the other, not spread out. And teachers, uh, you know, maybe they want them to see a lot of things in one sequence. You can add your own audio. You can add audio files. Um, there's ways to add audio to existing slides. Maybe you need to give your students some additional instructions. They're used to hearing your voice. Um, this is a PDF viewer. And what that means is I'm an English teacher. We're studying the Raven. It's fairly long. I don't want it chopped up on three different slides. I want them to see the whole uh, poem at, on one. And so I would save it as a PDF and bring it in as, PD, as a PDF viewer. So I've been adding content, but here's how I, if I wanna add activities, I just click on the word activities. So let's start with open-ended question. Here's my question. I type in uh, what, do you know about world blah, 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 blah. Okay, but look over here. One, I can add a timer. I can add media, which means an image or a video or audio instructions. If I click on that, notice down here that's bringing in an image video, but I have an audio recorder. Maybe my students need this question read to them. I click on audio recorder. I hit the microphone. Students, tell me what you know about World War II. Was there anyone in your family that participated in World War II? And I click stop. And then I could listen and I could redo it if I needed to. But now the students, they'll see that little uh, kind of microphone deal. You know, they know what it is and they could click on it and it would be read to them. Also, enable student audio recordings. Maybe your students do much better answering orally than trying to type in. So you can turn that on and that way you can um, have the students uh, actually do their own audio recording. This could, uh, you could ask them to give a speech. You could, there's just so many things you could do and let them do a recording. And those recordings will be in your reports. So I'm gonna save this. And just like on content, all of this is down there at the bottom. I'm clicking on activities. I know you're starting to get bored because I'm just doing the same thing over and over. You can make a time to climb from scratch. However, I would rather find one already done or just take a quiz and turn it into a time to climb. Uh, this is matching. We're studying, I can give my instructions, match the blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, we're studying presidents of the United States. So I'm gonna type in Abraham Lincoln. I think he was from Illinois. And I'm going to, I want them to match it with his image. Again, it goes to Google Images and I type in Abraham Lincoln. If I just typed in Lincoln, I would get pictures of Abraham Lincoln and of Lincoln cars. Uh, so here's a good picture of Abe. I click on it. I say save. And I have this little doohickey thing here. Slider, I guess, would be a proper name that I can make it fill up. 
I can add another pair. I click on, I have a math problem, 81. And then, I mean, that's the result of nine times nine equals. Add another pair. I put the letter C and I look for an image of a cat. And I find these pressure. <laughs> That's a funny one. That cat doesn't look very happy. Uh, maybe it doesn't like virtual learning. And so I can add, I think it's either 12 or 14 pairs, which is plenty. Uh, I'm just going to say done. And so here are all my pairs that I quickly uh, created. And I can add a timer. And then I just hit save. Guess what? Add a slide. Click on activities. Here's a quiz. It's just like you've created a quiz any other time. You put your question here. Uh, you could add audio. You could add an image. You could put your answers here. Uh, there is a math, uh, that little pie sign. If you uh, click on it, will here's this. And I could have, and I could have more than two answers. Now I'm going to say that's the right answer. Now when I hit save over here, it's going to say, "Whoops, I did not give." Please complete. So when I was doing question one, I did not select a right answer. So it won't let me post that quiz unless I have picked the correct answer. Add a slide, add activities. You can do this. Um, here's the draw it. Draw a picture of what you did this weekend. Great. Add a timer. I could bring in some images. I could have an audio, I could read it to them. That's all it is to do a draw it, where they are actually drawing something. Add a slide, add activities. Here's the collaborate board. Uh, yeah, here's the collaborate board. I had to stop and think, where were we? Uh, we were doing, we did pray. Here's my, I want, this is what I want them to do. I tend to stick to these first three as backgrounds because I like the contrast. Um, I think to me, that's not enough contrast. It's not as easy to read. And so I usually have that, but that's up to you. Now, remember all of these are down here at the bottom. And then later on, I'm just gonna move them to where I would like them. Hey, Joan. Add a slide. Yes. Hey, Joan. Some of so a couple of our teachers use Flipgrid, and I noticed it on there. Um, can you show us how? Okay. Flipgrid let me. Um, let me. Okay. And this has recently changed for those of you that uh, use Flipgrid. Uh, and so let's kind of save that for the end, so I make sure that everybody gets everything. Sounds okay? good. Okay. But just remind me. Okay. A poll is, here's your question. What is your favorite ice cream? Vanilla, chocolate, Rocky Road. And I do have the option here of allowing students to choose more than one. Okay, save. Add a slide, add activities. This is fill in the blank. And I do wanna show you because there's just this one hint that I want you to understand. Three large cities in Texas are Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio. 
I could fill up this whole screen with text when I've got all my text in here. And again, you know, as much as I love purple and white or lavender, that's, I don't like the contrast. So I like things for my students to have lots of contrast. Now I click on the, oops, excuse me. I click on the words that I want to be in the word bank. And the reason I showed you this type of question, remember this will be graded. I put Dallas, Houston, San Antonio. If a student were to drag Houston first, then Dallas, and then San Antonio, the, it would be counted wrong because they didn't put them in the same order that I did. And so I would be, um, when I do something like this, I make sure it's very sequential. Uh, largest to smallest, greatest to least, or something like that, so that there's an exact right or wrong answer. But that's how you build, fill in the blanks. Okay, add a slide. Activities. Now, memory tests, this is for you if you're a kindergarten teacher or such. These are just cards like matching a cat to a cat, a cow to a cow, a dog to a dog. And it's for the younger students. It's not the same as matching pairs. All you can do right here is to um, have an image to an image, okay? Now, this is Flipgrid. And Flipgrid is a student response and all. Now, what they're asking here is to insert the Flipgrid teacher URL and insert the student, Flipgrid student URL. Now, I haven't played with this since Flipgrid has made some changes. And so, if it doesn't work like you think it should, and I love Flipgrid, just um, you may have to come back here and put in your top, instead of the teacher URL, because they've changed everything now to topics, put in the topic URL to take you to your specific uh, Flipgrid and then put in the URL you want your students to go to. So this really should be topic URL and that will work, but that's due to changes that um, Flipgrid made recently, okay? So let me go back to, well, I got out of Nearpod, how, how dare me? Let me just go back very quickly and to my, I'm back to my library. Now I will say, you know, sometimes I just kind of click and all. Uh, I have never lost anything in Nearpod. It does save automatically. And so here is my uh, World War II that we have been adding things to. And you notice it does save save changes, which I would do normally, but you know, I was, uh, I just clicked in the wrong spot. So once I had added everything, I would just start moving all of this uh, around. So that's why I say to you that you can very quickly have a lesson and you can do it by one, just going to the Nearpod library right here. And you could just type in here weather. And that's be your only search term. Or I might say weather third grade. And it would bring these up. And so those that you see that just have a, have a time underneath them, that means those are just videos that Nearpod has created or somebody has created for them. And this one is three minutes and 22 seconds. Here's one, I love this gal. Uh, one minute and 22 seconds. And so you might just use the video by itself. You could put it in a presentation and all. And so I do want to share with you. Let me see if I just get into this one. 
Um, okay, so here's the video and it comes up here. It has the transcript. It has the video questions. Again, you can preview it. So if I go to preview, I, will, I can go through the uh, presentation. And any time you see a blue dot, that is an embedded question. Maybe I want to add a question here that's not a part of it. So I click on it. Oh, I'm in preview. I have to do it in edit mode. I'll come back and I'll do it the right way. But you can add your own uh, questions uh, that you would like to. So now show in my library. So I'm taking hurricanes now uh, into my library and here I can uh, edit this. Oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Oh no, uh, cancel that. Okay, so I have all of, you know, I have this in here and all. And so let's go to, I could share this with my uh, teachers and all. And I could preview the videos. I might also have other uh, videos that are on the same topic and all. And so let's just uh, make sure this saves. And this was one that was uh, grades three through eight. And I'm not sure why it's not saving. I haven't had this problem. Well, let's just go to my library and see if it just went there by some miracle. Oh, there it is. I, maybe I'd already saved it. Now, let me tell you something that we've discovered. Um, as I said, this had, remember it had uh, uh, edit lesson. It had two questions embedded. And so if I want to add more questions, I click where I'd like the question. I say, add activity. I want to do a multiple choice question. And I type it right here. And I give my options. And I choose the right one and I save it. I could have gone out to YouTube and brought in a like kids president. It's not going to have questions. And I could have added uh, those questions. So I could show this by itself, or I could put it into an exist a slideshow. What we have discovered, you know, you always discover little things. So I'm, I'm going to make a, uh, uh, I'm putting, I'm going to make it as kind of like a slideshow. If I do and you'll see why I'm typing this. Okay, I'm going to save and exit. If you do a, a video that has questions as self-paced, no problem because the students are going to do it on their own. If you do it in live participation, and you click on their their you know all devices then what will happen you will start the video but maybe your students are a little late in starting it or they started at different times and what happens is that when it gets to a question it immediately throws that question up on their screen well, maybe they haven't seen all of that information yet. So one teacher suggested doing like a countdown slide. You know, let's look at, we're going to look at a video. You're going to answer some questions. I want all of you to start at the same time. So let's get ready. Three. So he goes uh, to this and he may say um, three, two, one click. So he's trying to get all his students to, to to literally start it as close as they can, and all. And he might 
hold his back just a little. So that that's just something that has we've discovered in life participation from teachers using it. And um, I'm sure Nearpod is very aware of it. And they'll probably try to figure out how, if you do live participation on their devices, how to let the whole video get through before it asks a question. Self-paced, not a problem, not, you know, at all. So I just wanted to um, bring that up, heads up and all. Now, I've gone back into this one, and remember I said you could convert any slide into a um, draw it. So let's just take this slide. It has some words on it. Notice this has always been grayed out, and now I com click convert to draw it. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to keep I'm not going to keep a copy of it. I'm just going to convert it to a draw it. And when I double click on it, I put my instructions here. Circle the nouns in green and the verbs in red. So this was just um, a slide that was just sentences, but I converted it to a draw it. Now, probably this one uh, does not have you know, it's, it's not going to have any, it's going to have videos. Uh, it's going to have URLs, but it might not have any with the embedded questions because it was done, uh, you know, before those options were available. So I'm looking through this one just to see. Um, here's a 3D. Oh, those, these are the things I put in. Okay. This is the quiz, which is not very good that I made, but notice when I click on a quiz, this convert to time to climb comes up and you can now make it into that gamified quiz. That's how easy that is. Now, if you wanna find some time to climbs that are already made, you come to the Nearpod library you search, you come up here just to the search screen and you type in time to climb. Now, these are already done for you. They tell you what grade is appropriate because you can preview the questions. This is where I found there, there, and there. Here's the life cycle of the butterfly, saving and investing. I'm not sure how many there are, but there's a lot and all. So you can use these by themselves or in a lesson. Now, there's one thing very important I want us to do. I want you over here in the top right-hand corner, this is your profile. And mine has my picture in it. I click on my profile and I slide down here to lesson settings. Now, these can be turned on or off. That's up to you. This is very new, enable student names to autofill. If you're using Google or Office 365, they'll autofill their names when joining a lesson. Here's immersive reader. I would turn it on. You may have students, regardless of what grade you teach, that you need to have that turned on. Enable student notes. I would certainly turn that on. Show quiz and multiple choice question results uh, in the student pace. That means, do you want the students after they have done a self-paced to see uh, their right uh, answers and or what the right answer is. And so I would uh, turn that on. That's again, you can always come back and change that. Do you want students to be able to resubmit their answers in live participation mode? I have mine turned off. Uh, you can have, you know, that's up to you. 
maybe you have it turned on because, okay, you have a, you've come to some where questions have been asked, you've had a great discussion and you want them to be able now to go back and resubmit. Make sure you turn on enable collaborate board for student paced lessons. Otherwise, if they're in student paced and you have a collaborate board, when they get to it, if this is not turned on, they will get a pop-up message that says waiting on teacher input. So make sure you turn that on. I would certainly turn this one on. Require student submissions in the self-paced environment. I want them to do those activities. And so I would turn that on. So I got to that by coming over here to my profile, lesson settings, and then this will window will pop up and you can just turn them off, or off and on. Now, to get back to my Nearpod library, I just click on this Nearpod icon. I'm in my library, not in the Nearpod library. But as I said, you can go to the Nearpod library certainly anytime. Uh, and I think uh, I was told we had a Spanish teacher watching and I wanted to share with you an idea that came, uh, that a teacher had. Remember on open-ended questions, they, there's that toggle where you, students can reply orally. So you might have a passage that you would like for them to read in Spanish. And so your instructions might be read the passage wherever it might come from orally. And you could hear them, uh, to hear how they are pronouncing their words in Spanish. So open-ended question is very, very popular. Now, as I said, I have um, all sorts of lessons. And if I have a lesson that, you know, this is just really not garbage, I was just demonstrating, I can come here and I can delete it. And I just go ahead and delete that one. Now, remember that we haven't talked about reports yet. You can get to them several ways. Those three dots, you can get to your reports. You can get to reports by clicking on this. So when I click on this, it pulls up all of my reports. All right, you can see I've probably done, I've done this lesson a lot. And so I click on it. This could have been weather, whatever. Here's the lesson we're doing today. And it shows me how many students. And that's why I'm saying those of you that maybe have period one, period two, period three, you wanna have a different code so that your students are grouped by that period. I'm just gonna click on this. And I see a summary of how everybody did, what was the participation uh, and such. I can look at um, any of uh, these. Here's an open-ended question. And this was on predator and prey. And I can see what each of my students answered. I get the time to climb. I get the results on the interactive video. I also can come down and I can see how Mr. Cannon did. Well, he did, he did very well. And he almost participated in everything. So I can see it by name. I can see it by question. I can see it by overall. You can download these reports and such. You can share them with other teachers. This is how so-and-so is doing in my class, whatever. And so you see um, how the, and these reports to, see, to stay here for a long time and all. But uh, as I said, if it can be graded, it, can, it will be in the reports as a graded. If, if drawings, open-ended questions, 
you're going to see what they how the, what their response was. So uh, reports again is just a great time saver uh, for you. Now, I have been doing a lot of the talking, so are there questions that you would like to ask? Just unmute and and ask your questions. Well, maybe maybe all of you got it. I hope so. And uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now. And now I can actually see you. <laughs> you stayed with us and all. Uh, but I find I can use it with any uh, grade level, any subject area. And uh, you just have to get in there. Find a lesson that you know you can use, edit it. If you, um, you know, in any way, that's where I would start. The first lesson I would do with my kids, I would, you know, I would do something. I'm not trying to real, you know, kind of fun, kind of relax for you and for the students. And all that will help you get comfortable and it will help the students uh, to be comfortable and all. So, so, so John, when they do the um, self-paced lesson, let's say they were doing the, the same things that we were doing, that yeah. predator prey one, yeah. but they were doing self-paced, it's going to track them answering the questions, whether they're right or wrong, just like if they were with us um, on a, mm -hmm. uh, in the Ab classroom or uh, remotely. Absolutely. And let's say I do a, a, assign a self-paced lesson to my students on Monday, and uh, to that group, and I say to them, uh, you have to Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. to complete this. And I can go in, because uh, that code is live automatically for 29 days. I can go in and see what their progress is. Are they working on it? Or are they gonna wait till the last minute uh, to do it? So you can peek at that to see uh, how they're doing. But it's the same lesson exactly, same questions. And that's so, why I was very clear on, I want them to do those activities. I require it of them. So up here in Illinois, we've got remote learning. Yes. And we've got e-learning. They're two okay. different things. So really they could put that in a self-paced thing on an e-learning day where the kids could do it and um, in lieu of here being at school because exactly. of the weather. Exactly. And that's one reason I think we're seeing such, I mean, I am training on Nearpod for Nearpod. I don't, you know, I, I, I just do this as a, a contract person for them, is that I think everybody in the world has decided this is a real healthy solution to the fact that they've got the virtual learners and they've got the e-learners and what, and that they can, you know, they, the students that are on those e-learning days or virtual learning can get the same materials. And, um, and I will tell you, if you have those young students, you, first of all, they're growing up with technology and they catch on so fast. One of my very best lessons was several years ago. I was in Alabama and I had these class of kindergartners and we, they had never touched an iPad. They certainly didn't know what Nearpod was. Um, we brought them to the library because we had visiting schools. We had I, the school board. We had everybody in the world there. And these kids came in and we placed, gave each of them an iPad. And we, I talked to them about safety and how to hold it and all. And then I said, we're going to do a lesson on Pete the Cat and the, his white tennis shoes. And so, I mean, they were so excited and the engagement was just amazing. And, you know, I used to draw it a lot because, you know, they were young and we drew five strawberries and six blueberries and whatever. And the teachers, I think they're, well, when I said they could, uh, they could open their, uh, near, you know, near pod, and we'd type in these letters. These teachers just jumped up like they needed help. 
And I had to tell the teachers, sit down. We've got it. These kids know what they're doing. So kids, very young. And the fact that you can make audio is um, just a terrific tool and all. So yes, I just, I think that you'll find it a great tool to use. And Lisa, very you, you're, you've been doing Nearpod for a while. Is there something that you're finding that maybe um, we didn't cover today or maybe something that Joan could go into a little bit more that you, you found useful? Um, no, I think she's covered <laughs> most of it. <laughs> well, we tried to in 101. I just, you know, there are maybe some very advanced things, but you know, when it's most teachers are just learning this, these I feel like are the things they want to be able to do. And I just want them to feel comfortable with it. And with the fact that Nearpod's adding new things. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you learned a, something aren't <laughs> as well. So what grade do you teach, Lisa? Mostly high school. Okay. And so have you been using the student pace with high school students at all? Um, a little bit. I haven't really needed to because most okay. of my students are in person. How wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And they have their own devices. Correct. Right, right. Uh, and so notes for them is, I think is a great tool to make sure they turn on notes and all. And, you know, they would, the minute they got out of it, that those notes would either be emailed to them or such. So, okay. And Any Angie, Angie, I know that you've used Flipgrid. Did that part about the Flipgrid make sense, what Joan was saying, or do we need to talk about that a little bit? No, it makes sense with, I know they made a ton of changes in this last, six months or better but they oh, made no, it even for a reason <laughs> more yeah reason. <laughs> i know since january there were a lot of changes on it right and the yeah. main thing is what you put in there because they've switched to topics and mm -hmm. they don't you know gotten rid of the grid yep format and if you i think you'll be fine if you just put in that topic url that's, that's what it. i was hoping to <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know what, if it doesn't work, send me an email and I'll uh, find, I mean, people have detailed instructions. I just know that's, that's what has one of the big changes. Yeah. Yeah. That caught me off guard. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I know. Don't you love it when you're not yeah. here about it ahead of time? Yeah. <laughs> We and, learned it again. Uh, yeah. They don't just call us up and say, oh, I'm making this change and here's yeah. how you do it. So. But it sounds so, like you all are doing great and I, you have a high participation of face-to-face, -face, which is not true with many of the schools that I'm, I'm working with. And they're trying their hardest to get their students back and all, so. Yeah, um, we, we, uh, we uh, uh, basically have been hounding them saying, we wanna stay in person, not in these little boxes to learn. So is there did anything you, from any did you bribe, of you ask you, did you bribe them or did you just hound them? <laughs> Starting with the hounding. Bribing <laughs> might come later. Okay. But, um, anybody out there, is there anything, any piece that maybe you want a little bit more of or anything that maybe you just, you know, have her just have Jones just kind of rehash or um, do you want to just take it in? Any, anybody out there that, you know, is there anything that we, you know, you know, we've got Joan here, so. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> really, the best thing is to jump in and do it. And I would, yeah. you can bring in your PowerPoint. Are you a Google Classroom or not? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can bring in a Google Slideshow just as well as a PowerPoint. Um, I can show you that if you would like. Um, and you had a question there. I just had a question. I did step out to go to the restroom, so unless I missed it, but what if you just want to create your own completely from start? I just, what is the initial step for that? Then you just go, let me go, let me go back to sharing my screen and uh, be in my Nearpod library. 
and all. So um, uh, this is my library and up here at the top, it says new. And I can create a lesson in Nearpod. And I just click on that. And when I get this screen, I can start just adding slides just like you saw me do. So I could add, again, I could add content. I could add um, just a title slide. I've used this when I'm doing uh, just the title slide and I'm type and I just say weather and I can have some colors over here that I can add. I don't have a lot of um, choices, but you know, that's okay. Also, uh, down here at the bottom, and I did not show this, and I, so I'm glad we're back in here. Down here at the bottom, I can add backgrounds. I can change the layout. Here's what's important. Here's this audio. And I can bring in an audio file, like a WAV file, or here's my audio recorder again. You saw how I added audio to an existing slide. Here, I might click on this. Today, students, we are going to be studying about weather. Our weather seems to be making some drastic changes. So we will discuss this in the lesson and I will be asking you questions. Bingo. So I've added this audio file to this opening slide and all. And then I just save and exit. Uh, I change because I added the background and I say that's fine. Okay. And then I just keep adding these slides as I go along. So I could add the 3D, I could add a website, just as I was doing in that existing one. And so I'm just. And I, as I said, I always test the link. We know that goes out to NASA and I save it. And even after I get started, I can move these around. So you can create right from scratch. Um, if you had a PowerPoint, you could drag it here. That's not a problem. I will say, I'm just gonna save an exit. And you, and you give it a lesson. I'm just gonna call it demo. And you say what grade, what subject, and oh, I got that. Okay, save and exit. Uh, this uh, there is another. Okay, demo fifteen, or <laughs> we'll just put fifteen. Doesn't matter. So you know now that's just one that I have uh, created uh, from scratched. I did have a teacher ask me the other day, what's the, she says, I make a lot of my videos. And when I try to bring my own videos in, it says that they're too large. And so the maximum size to bring a video in is uh, 20 meg. And so if you have a 30 minute or 45 minute video you've made, it's probably going to be, to be uh, too large and all. So I can, that's creating a lesson in Nearpod. Uh, this, if I wanna do a lesson in Google Slides, there's a couple of ways. I can just bring, I can just take my Google Slideshow and just copy it into um, um, Nearpod. But let's say I already have some made, I don't wanna make one from scratch. So I'm going to go out here and I'm going to go to my Google Drive. Okay, and I have, I have two Google accounts, so I always have to see where I am. Here's a Google slideshow that I made. I, I made in Google Slides. And you know, I, I like doing it in Google Slides sometimes because I can get these cute backgrounds, you know, slides. This is probably from Slides Mania or something uh, and all. And so uh, this is actually a copy 
of my you know, Google Slides and all. If you're doing it this way, you need to go to the Chrome store and you go to, and you make sure you add add-ons. You go to, you're in Google Slides, you go to add-ons and you go get add-ons. I already have uh, Nearpod. And so when I do that, when I have that add-on, what happens is the way I was adding um, to my lesson that Jody Lung had done, here are all the Nearpod things that I can do right here. And so I might add a open-ended question. And let's say I want to be on this, maybe this slide right here. And so I just come here and I do open-ended question. It looks just like it did when I was doing it in Nearpod. I put in my question here. I might add a picture, this and all, and I save it. So I'm doing, I'm adding activities and content into a Google slideshow. And then when this is, when I've done this, I say, save and go to Nearpod. And now it's taking it back to Nearpod and that's where I can launch it. Um, oh, okay, it doesn't like that I have two accounts, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyhow, so I've brought it back in to, uh, to Nearpod and I can use it from here. So uh, several ways, you can start a lesson from scratch, you can go to the Nearpod library, you can do the, bring it in from uh, Google and all. You know, I guess I've gotten lazy, I like to search for, and I do, you know, I know some of the, um, uh, ones that have done um, the lessons and I just know how good they are. So and now I'm coming up close to my two hours and you all have been a great group. I will be sharing resources and I hope um, everything continues to go well. We're all gonna get through this and all. I remember my email is Joan Gore at Yahoo if you have a question and all. So it's been my pleasure. Thank you, John. Okay. And I hope it, you don't have a blizzard anytime. <laughs> no. We did have snow on Halloween last year, but let's hold off on that. Oh, my goodness. See, we wouldn't know what to do. Our bad weather comes in January yeah. and February. Yeah, you so, guys get the ice down there. Yes, we don't get beautiful snow. <laughs> Our kids would go crazy. And, and all the schools would close because we don't have... <laughs> the transportation. Y'all don't have plows down there, yeah. Right. So I will uh, be sending you additional resources and bills as soon as the video, oh, I'm still recording. Uh